So this is day three of the beta and we spent most of our time playing every single character and learning all the characters in the beta. So there's eight total and I'm going to go through all of them one by one, give you an idea of how these characters play and, you know, give you a heads up so you can kind of figure out which character you guys will like or when the next beta happens, hopefully uh, you'll have a good head start on how to play them. So we have to start with Poster Boy Ryu. Well, he's not the Poster Boy anymore, but you know what I mean. We start with Ryu. So Ryu is really, really good in this game. Uh, you don't have to worry about him being like Street Fighter V Ryu. He's very strong. He's got a lot of tools in this. He's very well-rounded as he should be. He's Ryu. Uh, he's got really good zoning. His fireball is really fast. It's got a great, a great speed. You can buff it up and uh, you can zone no problem against most of the characters in this beta. Uh, he has all of his traditional moves. He has his uppercuts. His uppercuts are all invincible to air attacks. They do a lot of damage. They do one hit. He's got his tattoos still. Uh, they still go over fireballs. If the opponent throws a fireball, you can still uh, go over it. So a quick example. But on top of that, he's got some new things. Like, he can cross up with his Tatsu now, finally. Unlike Street Fighter V, which is like one of the main things. Oh, what's the strength? One of the main things that people were asking for, and they finally just saved it for uh, Street Fighter VI. <laughs> uh, he's got some new special moves, too. I mean, let's go over his normals, too. I forgot to go over his normals. Um, his standing light punch is so good in this game. His standing light punch is not like a T-Rex arm in this. It actually goes really, really far. So you can do some really crazy light confirms like this in the uppercut. I never thought I'd see the day where Ryu can do three standing light punches in a row. It's very awkward. <laughs> His standing medium punch is pretty much the same as, as Street Fighter V. Uh, he can still walk in and poke with it. Uh, his crouching medium kick is really good. It goes really far in this game. Um, standing heavy punch. A lot of heavies are all cancelable. His standing heavy kick is really plus. So plus that he can combo sweep after. But it's still uh, whips on crouchers. Um, he still have his solar plexus punch. Uh, this uh, is plus on block now. They actually changed this from when we saw the footage before. It's plus one on block. Rather than minus two. And if it hits, it's plus enough where uh, you can combo after. I think it's sending medium punch because it's plus six. Yeah. You can still combo after it. Still has his overhead. But he's got some new command normals. He's got a forward heavy kick now. This is like the hop kick. Something I really wanted uh, Ryu to have for his view skill 2 in Street Fighter V. It can go over lows. You can cancel it into uh, your OD Tatsu. You can do some cool stuff in the corner, like humble uppercut after. He's got a back heavy punch now. Looks like an anti-air, but crouching heavy punch is an anti-air. Uh, you can link after this thing, after a, a, a standing medium punch, just to do some, you know, extensive combos. So that's a new commander. We've got a new uh, target combo. It's uh, medium punch, light kick, heavy kick. So he's got a bunch of new tools. Uh, he also has the donkey kick, by the way, in this game. It's like an unga move. It goes really far. If you punish counter with it, it causes him to roll and you can do like some crazy OTGs after. But it's core circle forward kick in this game. It's not half circle forward kick. So it's a lot easier to, you know, buffer in, in neutral. He also has this palm move, which is really sick. The heavy version, like, puts him up for a chuckle, and you can combo after. You can do, like, this or into super. Yes, he's got a new dungeon stock move, so you go down, down, punch, and it'll enhance your next fireball. So it goes really fast, like a one dungeon fireball, and more plus. And if you do, and it also enhances the palm moves, so it makes this very plus. Plus. Yeah, it makes it more plus. Just one more, though. And then if you hit them with it... Yeah, it's like a good pressure move. It makes them flip up in the air. And if you can do the OD version from this... And it crumples them. So then you're able to, like, extend your combos. Something like this, you know? 
it also enhances my supers, I think, too. This 24. Yeah, so it did 400 more damage. And also enhances your level 2 as well. Yeah, he still has his axe kick in this too. You can still special cancel it. I think you can combo it after your donkey kick. Like you can do this in the uppercut. If you do it early enough. Yeah, like that. That's pretty cool. Still works like a similar way. Uh, he still has his heavy punch, heavy kick target combo too. You could probably anti air with the first hit of this as well. And maybe get a DP up this just for a little extra damage. What makes Ryu so strong in this game is that combat into the OD Donkey Kick gives you so much time to decide what you want to do. Like, you have so much flexibility in your combos because this is like your normal BNB, but you can go into like super from this. You know, you can go into level three. You can, you can go for OP, right? Into uh, Tatsu. There's so many options he gets. I think Ryu is one of the stronger characters in this game so far, just because uh, he's pretty easy to play. He's so well-rounded in this. He doesn't have like glaring weaknesses like he did in Street Fighter V, and he really uses the drive system well. Like I said, he's got the overhand. He's got a plus normal. He's got great strings, good range now. He does a lot of damage. He's also one of the most explored characters right now, and people are finding a lot of cool combo with him. I think Ryu is really good in Street Fighter VI. This is definitely one of the, the best versions of Ryu I've seen in Street Fighter. All right, let's go over Jamie, one of the new characters in the game. Jamie's another really strong character so far. He's like a mixture of Yang and Yang. He's got Rekkas. That's like the unique thing about him. He's got really good confirms. And you can space them out, make it hard for the opponent to punish. He's got Unga too. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie's really fun. Definitely uh, a confirming character. He wants to play close. And he's got a unique drink system too. So his normals, in particular, his standing medium kick is really good. It's like Ryu standing medium kick, but it's special cancelable. So that means you can like play footsies, go over a neutral, a crouching normal, and drive rush into it. Very strong. Uh, his sweep is insane, because his sweep is also a target combo. So a lot of Jamie players will abuse sweep on you and they'll get a dream stock, which is very cheap. Crouching heavy punch is a good anti-air. He also has this amazing like Wing Chun heavy punch. It does three hits and it's specifically made to blow up drive impact. And this is really good for Jamie if you're in burnout mode and you have no options and you need to blow up uh, drive impact, it'll do that. Very, very cool. I hope they have more moves like this in the game. And his crouchy immune kick is also special cancelable as well. So the whole thing about Jamie is that he's got this drink mechanic and you press down, down punch and you'll get a drink stock and you'll see on the top left of the screen. And every time you get a drink level, there's four total, you get access to new moves. So at level one, now you have a dive kick. And the dive kick is like young. You can use this to uh, change your trajectory, bait uppercuts, you know, go over fireballs. Uh, you can combo after it too with like the OD version. If it's special, you can do like uppercut after. The uppercut as well. It looks slow, but you can cross cut with this no problem. It's also a reversal. If you OD version, you're invincible. There's also cool juggles you can do after it too, Ocho Cho. He has this uh, palm move. This palm move is very unga. It's fast. You can space it. So you can just kind of throw it out there. The OD version does a lot of damage, and in the corner, you can OTG after uh, with your uppercut. Does a lot of damage. You can do a lot of cool things, sweep, and get a drink stock after. The Rekka is core circle forward punch, and then you have the option of going forward punch, forward punch for three hits total. So it's one, one, two. But if you press forward kick instead, you'll do a kick move. You'll do a little less damage, but you'll get a drink. So it's a knockdown and a drink all in one move. Most Jamie players are going to do the drink. 
because they're gonna want to build their stocks up to get more moves on you but you have the option for just you know damage right you can also od it to get the damage and the drink so you get kind of best of both worlds if you if you want to do that as well uh james has got a really cool overhead uh you can combo after from drive rush and go into the records from there Yeah, he's got a launcher kick. In the launcher, you can just juggle into a jumping medium punch, like this. Uh, if I have my dive kick, you go like this. The cool thing is when you drive rush into his launcher kick, he gets more properties with it, so he can juggle with any button. So you can do like heavy kick, for example. So you can do DP from that. Uh, for his drink stocks, he also gets uh, extra target combos as well. At level 1, he also gets the light punch, light kick, medium punch target combo that uh, Young does. From Street Fighter 3. And of course, you can go into your records from it. So he gets a new target combo too. Also, every time you drink, you get more damage. So I can do, it says 90% on the screen. So Jamie's actually a little weaker. Like scaling wise, without any drinks. But once you get one, all of a sudden he gets 5% more. Two stocks, 105, and then on the last level, you get 10% more damage on everything. On everything you do. Yeah, level two, he gets the break dance. This does a lot of damage for a special attack. Uh, it's really slow startup, so most of the time you have to, you know, combo into it. So you can go like something like this. And it should do more damage than the Rekkas. Uh, and then there's the OD uh, version as well. And it knocks him away. So at level 2, you get an overhead follow-up. Target combo. You can do target combo, and then you can get a drink from it. You can barely see it, but Jamie's drinking while upside down. <laughs> while spinning. So you get a sweep. You basically get an over and a high low into drink, you know. Jamie will open you up eventually and get those drinks. Like Capcom gave you a lot of options than just you know drinking from from full screen. Now at level three, you get a command grab, just like you know Yang Yang basically. It's half circle back kick, and Jamie will poke you in the eyeballs, and it doesn't do any damage by itself, but it allows you to uh, combo after. So this is really scary when you combine it with like his new uh, dive kick, right? And he's got a lot of forward moving moves. And you become really defensive against Jamie. And then he can open you up that way, right? Okay, now at the final level, Jamie becomes super cracked. His Rekkas do a lot of hits. A lot more damage. He gets a new follow-up to his palm move. He press forward punch after. Look how much damage that does. Massive, massive damage. I think he moves faster too. Like his movement speed is faster. And when uh, when Jamie drinks, these levels will persist through the whole round. But then the next round he loses all of his stocks and he has to start over again. Jamie's level two. It will give you four levels right away in your max level. But it's a timer on the bottom left of the screen. And then when this runs out, regardless of how many drinks levels you had before you did this super, you'll always start back at zero. So it's just like a cool way to get to level 4 right away. He also gets a lot of like drunken boxer style moves during this too. Like his forward heavy kick command normal, you can now cancel it and weave backwards like this. And you can drink. If you drink while you're already level 4, it will. what it will do is it will uh, refill your drive gauge. So if I drink, see it refills my drive gauge. So, drinking is still really good for Jamie, even when you're a level 4. Yeah, the, drunk, the Drunken Boxer is really cool. Yeah. Does he refill and burn out quicker? We can check real quick. Yes, he does. Good question. His level 3 is really cool, because the non-C version causes a juggle state, and he can combo afterwards. 
and there's a lot of like mix-ups and stuff you can do afterwards that I've seen people do videos for. There we go. So even though, even if you don't have your CA with Jamie, you might even be better, you might even do more damage with the non-CA version, because you can't do that juggle with the CA version. Yeah, Jamie looks really strong, but then again, like I said, every character seems strong. But if you like that kind of in-your-face, kind of yun and yang uh, style character, then Jamie is for you. Okay, let's go over Chun-Li now. Chun-Li is by far the most complicated character in this game so far, uh, mainly because of her stances. She was already complicated before, even Street Fighter V, because all of her buttons have very specific uses, and it's like that too in Street Fighter VI. Uh, but now, at least, her crouching medium punch is not a slide anymore, so now you can at least do like standing medium punch, crouching medium punch, so that's not as confusing anymore, and you can still, you know, combo after it. She still has her crazy standing heavy punch. Her light kick is not this weird, like, pseudo anti-air. Now it's like actual a poke. Her standing medium kick is actually her anti-air now. And she has her heavy kick. So, like I said, the big thing about Chun-Li is she has stances. So if you press core circle uh, back punch, she goes into a stance. And she's really low profile in this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, she's got to be a little further away. So from her stance, uh, you can go core circle back punch again to get out of the stance. And from the stance, every button changes. So now her light punch is this palm move. If you press medium punch, she now does the slide from Street Fighter V, which knocks down, goes underneath fireballs. Her heavy punch becomes an overhead. That's plus on hit, plus two. Her light kick becomes this long range poke, low poke, medium, same thing. And heavy kick is her launcher. So the cool thing about this stance is that uh, she doesn't have to charge. Like, so when she hits with the stance attack, she can instantly go into her specials by just doing the motion rather than charging. And this all kind of comes together because Chun-Li can cancel all of her normals into stance. Even normals that aren't special cancelable. She can stance cancel into everything. So she has a lot of unique combos uh, that she otherwise wouldn't have. So, for example, a counter hit uh, from, from standing heavy punch. I can go into uh, my crouch and light kick. And then I can drive rush from this. Right? And then she could do a whole bunch of things uh, from that. If she... Goes into a, a normal, into her stance, and into her launcher, you launch them up. And then you can do your jungle combos. So she has a lot of, of, of really unique combos that she can do. By the way, her combos are really hard, so bear with me. There we go. Something like that. Really complex stuff. So if you like those really high execution, super deep, complicated characters, then you know Chun Li is definitely your character. And once again, if you combine that with her not needing the charge, you can do really cool stuff. Like you can go something like this, like this, without the charge. Uh, you can also do mix-ups. You know, you can cancel your crouching medium kick and then stance and go overhead, for example. So she has two charge moves. Her fireball is still a charge. Her fireball recovers nice and fast. The OD version in particular goes extremely quick. Her spinning bird kick is also still a charge. Charge down, up kick. The OD version allows you to juggle after. Or you can go into, uh, you know, your supers. There we go. She can go into her supers. Level 1, level 2, level 3, doesn't matter. Uh, her lightning legs is just core circle forward kick. You don't have the option to mash buttons. It's only core circle forward kick. The OD version, you can just press it and then it keeps them standing. And you're plus three. So you can try to reset with pressure. Or, you know, you go into your, your level two from it. But if you press two kicks again, she'll knock you down. And it does more damage. It does not cost extra uh, drive gauge. It still costs two bars. You just decide. Do you want to keep them standing? Or do you want to knock them down and do more damage? It's your call. She has her uh, her uppercut kick is back, but it's not a charge move in this game. It's down, down, kick. 
So this is still a, a really good, it's invincible to jump in attacks. Uh, you can use it as a reversal. It's not her spinning bird kick anymore, I don't think. Yeah, it's this move. Because you see the gray, it's five frames invincibility. So since it's a down down input, it could be harder depending on what controller you use. But Hunley having this crazy ground game, but also now having an invincible anti-air makes Chun Li very, very strong in this game. Uh, her sweep is surprisingly not that minus two. Mirror was mentioning this to me. It's only minus seven on block, her sweep. Her sweep is pretty good. Not CBS too good where you're anti-airing with it though. Uh, what else? So Chun Li's got a lot of command normal still. She has her forward heavy kick. Uh, ill crush counter on punish counter. Knocking the opponent down. Allowing for a juggle. She has an overhead, down for heavy punch. This is an overhead. Like I said, the stance, heavy punch is also an overhead. Uh, her down for heavy kick returns. It doesn't knock him down like ST, instead you can combo after it. Uh, she still has her stomps. You can still instant stomp the opponent. Forward medium punch. It's forward or back medium punch. It's special cancelable in this game, so you can drive rush into it. And you can do, you know, fireball from it, which is very good. Back heavy punch returns. This is good for, like I said, stance combos. She's got her wall jump. Her own, She only has one target combo, and that's the jumping heavy punch, heavy punch. It's like her only target combo. Her jumping medium punch also hits twice. But they look really similar. Her supers are really cool because she can do her level 1 in the air. You can do like fancy stuff like that. There's a lot better combos than that. But if you combine that with like, you know, her level 2. So you can do something like... A... You can get, like, get all 3 levels. So she has a lot of combos because of this. I think that's pretty much it. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more to Chun Li than that, but that's just me once again kind of scratching the surface and kind of showing what she's all about. I've seen very few Chun Li players. I watched Goichi stream a bit, but he was showing a lot of cool stuff with her. A lot of people feel like Chun Li is very strong because she's got so many tools in this game, so many ways around everything. Oh, I forgot about her central. Oh my god, four circle back kick. Uh, the OD version, you can go over fireball. You can go over fireballs with all of them, but the OD version, you can juggle after. Oh my goodness. Almost forgot about it. So she has tools for a lot of things, like anti-zoning tools, right? Really good buttons, a good anti-air now. Not all of her moves are charged. And she's just a character that's going to take a really long time to master. And we'll see if she'll, you know, win a major this time. <laughs> that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, instant air legs? I don't think so. Yeah, the light, the light one. There we go. Yeah, she still has it. All right, it's time to go over you guys' favorite character, Luke. <laughs> so Luke, he's pretty much like the Street Fighter V Luke, but not. And I guess I'll go over that and when we do like a fun tier list or something. But he's got some new tools as well. So Luke still has his forward moving buttons. So he still has like his forward moving light that goes through target combo. But now he can special cancel from it. So now he can go like this. Ugh. Or if, if the opponent is blocking, he can go into fireball to make it safe, right? Or you can do like gimmicky stuff like this. He still has his standing medium punch that goes really far too. Goes into target combo. And he has his forward heavy punch. His forward heavy punch, he can cancel out of it. They, they kind of made it like reuse where it's plus two on block now. So it's slow, but it can help you get in at plus two, which is really valuable in this game because ba barely anything is plus, right? Uh, the second hit's minus 19, though, so, you know, don't do the second hit. It also moves you forward, so like, if you threw this out in neutral and your opponent jumps at you, you might like sneak and go uh, through them. So they don't hit you with a cross up, right? So that could be kind of good too. He has this forward uh, back heavy kick still. It's still really plus and as a punish counter. 
it stuns them. So you can get like big deeps from this. He's got a new target combo with crouching medium kick. So crouching medium kick into down heavy punch. He does like a headbutt. It's like shoulder hit move. It leaves him at plus one, which is once again really good in this game. Uh, he still has a standing medium kick. He still has that heavy kick. So if you if you play Luke in Street Fighter V, you'll be right at home with him. Uh, his fireball is really good in this game. It recovers nice and fast. On block, it's relatively safe. On it's plus one, which is which, which is unique to Luke. Like his fireball in particular is really good. It obviously goes really fast still, and the, the OD is fast. Now, Luke's unique thing in Street Fighter 6, what sets him apart from the other characters, is that he gets double OD moves. So he can spend additional bar to do two ODs in a row. So with his fireball, he can go core circle forward two punches, and then press two punches again, and he'll shoot two OD fireballs. And it'll cost one extra bar, so three total. So instead of two, it costs three. It'll basically allow you to win any fireball war. It's so fast, it just costs a lot, right? As much as a dry brush. And it knocks the opponent down. He has his core circle back punch. It works just like in, you know, in Street Fighter V. He could double OD this, and he'll headlock you, DDT. This does so much damage, but it's three bars. So if you did something like, say someone whips a DP in front of your face, what I like to do is I I do back heavy kick into this. Look how much damage this does to Ryu. Look at that. It was like 30%. Without even using a super. So massive damage. And you get Oki from this move too. It causes a hard knockdown. Uh, his uppercuts are back. His uppercuts are still really good. He could double OD his uppercut. Slam dunk him down. And it gives you Oki off an uppercut. So Luke has to spend a lot of meter uh, in this game, a lot. He still has his charge knuckles. They work pretty much the same way. Uh, but he can like loot them, like in Street Fighter V too. Like that. His combos are tough. There we go. You need to practice. He can do them in the air. So when he does his knuckles in the air, he moves forward. Doesn't matter what strength you use, he'll move the same trajectory. If you charge it, he goes upwards. What is this used for? I don't know. I think it's funny. We'll just leave it at that. I think it's amusing. His supers are really good too, especially his level one. His level one is basically his V Trigger one. And when you're in Fireball Wars, once again, I think Luke's main jam in this game is that he's a really good zoner. That's what sets him apart from uh, the other Shotos. It's like his zoning is very, very strong in this game because of his level one and his anti-zoning is really good too. And he's got a lot of flexibility at level one too because he can go something like, bear with me. His level two is just damage. I think it causes a lot of corner carry. There's a lot of damage too. His level 3, he runs and tackles you. <laughs> it's not a grab super. You can block this. But you can you can do like big combos with him too. Yeah, a lot of the characters jumping mediums are cancelable. Oh yeah, he still has his run. So you go run overhead or run shoulder. And he's like the only character in the game that I that I think has an armor move right now. He has like the only one. If anyone knows any other, let me know. But I'm pretty sure he's the only one that has an armor move right now. Besides obviously Dragon Ball. Which is unique to Luke right now with the characters. So I guess, yeah, if you like Luke in Street Fighter V, he feels different. Like I said, we're gonna talk about more because he has the same moves on the surface, but they kind of act a little different. The, the frame data is different, but I think he's a good beginner character. The only problem is that his combos, his better combos are tough to do. 
because you have to charge the knuckles and find them. And you saw me dropping them a lot as I was trying to show you guys. But he has all the tools that like, you know, Ashoto does. He's well-rounded and he's got forward moving attacks. And yeah, like I said, if you've seen Luke before, then you know how he would be in Street Fighter 6. All right, Jerry now. Jerry, I think is really strong in Street Fighter 6. Jerry has access to her special moves even without stocks. But when you get the stocks this time, it enhances them. It makes them better. So that's a lot better than Street Fighter V because before she didn't feel like a full character uh, without her stocks. And it made it really frustrating to play because you had to basically backdash and load up stocks just so you can like play the character normally. But not like this. Now with her, you can, you know, still do combos even if you unfortunately uh, don't have stocks. And, you know, still do your block strings and whatever you need to do. Her buttons. She's got a lot of command normals, a lot of far-reaching normals. Her standing medium kick is still really good. She has this forward heavy punch, two hits, and it's special cancelable. It makes it a really good confirm for drive rush. She still has her overhead kick. Yeah, this target combo here. We never did this in matches. She has a forward medium punch. She moves forward. So this was cool, and she's plus four. Her standing medium kick, like I said, is really good. When you drive rush this thing, it's very hard to react to. Like when you rush in and you do this move, it's gonna beat out like every one of your opponent's buttons. And she's plus seven after, so you can still combo. It's what it's a really good button for Jerry to drive rush into. I, I found when playing her. So back to Jerry's stocks, which is her main jam. So now the Fuha stocks is like its own kind of move now because there's different strengths to it. It's core circle back kick. The strength determines the speed of the stock. So you notice the heavy stock is really slow. So if you do the light one, it knocks them up, right? But if you do the heavy one, it knocks them up really high so you can juggle after. She can still like confirm into her stocks too, like this, which is good. The other unique thing is that now her stocks are not tied to the specific move. So in Street Fighter V, if I want to do her overhead kick, for example, Fuha, the core circle forward medium one, I would have to get the specific medium stock for it. But she doesn't need to do that. It, all it is is you get a generic stock and whatever of the three Fuha moves you do, she'll use the stock for it. She also has OD versions of these moves too fireball you just press two specific kicks to do them so the overhead is light kick heavy kick and the heavy kick one this move is medium kick heavy kick at the same time when she has multiple stocks she can cancel into them so you can go something like uh, and then knock them down after right or you can make something uh, relatively safe by going into the fireball one like this so she's still familiar in that way. Her combos in particular in this game are really, really good because now she has that flexibility of not needing the stocks, but when you do have them, uh, she can do some really, really crazy damage. Something like, like this. And you can get, you know, you can get your stocks in and out of, out of the combos because of the drive rush system. There we go something like that her super also gets enhanced damage from her stock so if you get a stock and you do her super and you hold down the button it'll do extra damage which is really good because her her heavy fuha this stock and knocks them up and you can go into like whatever you want right uppercut or uh into super if you have an extra stock you can like close out rounds really easy with her So you do like this, and then get the more damaging finisher. This is really good. And she goes to her level 3 and all that. Uh, so her fireball it has like no range normally, but it's good for block strings. She's minus 7, but it spaces her out. And then of course she has the, you know, the combo extender with the flip kick. I call it an overhead kick, but it's not actually an overhead. She still has the axe kick. You can still cancel out of it. She still has her uppercuts. Her light uppercut knocks down now instead of uh, stunning them on the ground. 
She could cross cut with this really well. She has her dive kicks back now too. She lost her flip kicks where she flips over fireballs, like her high zonshul, but now she has uh, her dive kicks are back. And if you press kick again after hitting the opponent, you get a follow from it. And the OD version allows you to juggle after. So it, it knocks up there for a really long time. And you can go like this into like level three, one. And I'm seeing some setups too with like a jumping medium punch into our dive kick, but I don't think it's a true fuzzy. Like I think you can you can crouch this, but I don't We have to like wait and see see the tech people have come up with. Her level two is really cool in this game. So her level two is a Feng Shui engine. And you can hold down the button when you activate it, and she'll do this dash attack. And it hits the opponent and allows you to basically start a combo from a, a straight hit so you can go like this into it and you can like you know you do your combos he gets full magic series so she can pump, like link to every button she can cancel into every button i think it's particularly strong this game because her the timer that you get this mode in it doesn't drain when you land hits so you can just go wild for a certain amount of time she cancel her sweep still into uh, with it, like her block strings are so nuts, dude. You don't have to worry about drive impact because she's canceling so many buttons. Her crouching heavy punch, uh, it knocks the opponent up for juggles, so you can like you know combo into your uh, you know dive kick. And you basically just kind of tie it all together, so she can do like you know more fancy stuff. Like that so i think jerry is very uh functional in this game a lot a lot better improvement over her street fighter 5 version she i think she's really good in this game really good i think she'll be very popular and i guess she'll be she'll be pretty overwhelming because of her stock system you know she could be one of the harder characters to play because you still have to manage your stocks to have control over and knowing what kind of combos you can do depending on what kind of stocks you have but it's not required anymore she can still hold her own even without it and i think the drive system complements her very well because of her really good uh mid-range buttons and her speed and i also feel like her fireball in particular is very strong because it allows her to get in in a game that's really hard to stay in because all your all buttons in this game are like super minus on block, having this fireball to get in makes I think Jerry extra strong. Okay, Guile now. Guile is another character that's very strong in this game. He, I would say, is the closest version of all the previous characters from Street Fighter V. If you play Street Fighter V Guile, you'll get this character immediately. The way Capcom made Guy on this game is that he's still simple, but he's just juiced up. So he still has his amazing normals, but now they're even crazier than before. His crouching medium kick is like a Dulcin normal now. It goes very far. His upside down kick is cracked. It is insane. It goes pretty much full screen now but you can still use it as a throw bait. And now it causes a punish counter. Knocks the opponent down. And uh, in particular, like in the corner, you can juggle into combos from it. Yes. He still has this amazing Solvod kick. His crouching medium kick is so cracked, you can link a flash kick from a punish counter. This combos. Kyle is, is mad good in this. He has this back heavy punch. His back heavy punch is special cancelable. He also has a target combo into it now. He still has his crouching mimic overhead, which is still very fast. Showed you guys the Sobot kick, so you can still go forward and back. His heavy kick is really good. He can drive rush into it. <laughs> so you can go like, since his back heavy punch is special cancelable, you can like dry rush into it so you can go like this. Oh, like this. Yeah. <laughs> and his sweep has a new target combo where he can go into his high step kick. Now this doesn't combo. 
But on punish counter, it does. So it's like a, a, a whip punish tool in this game. So you go... And you can special cancel out of it. Okay, so Gal usually only has two special moves. <laughs> But now he gets his V skill one as a special move. It's quarter circle back punch. It's not a charge move. You do your quarter circle back punch, and it's a normal move. And you can still throw your enhanced Sonic booms. Because it's a special move and not a V skill, you can OD it. And it stays on the screen for a very long time. And you can use it for like Oki, meaty Oki, and to protect you. And it's very good, and it slowly moves forward. It's it's very annoying in this game <laughs> because it moves forward. Yeah, you can use it like a wall, like an Aegis, right? His Sonic Booms are very fast. Now there's two Sonic Booms. There's the normal Sonic Boom. Hold on, I'm trying not to do perfect. There we go, Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom. But you can do a perfect version by pressing, by charging back and pressing forward and punch on the same frame. It's a just frame. So if your inputs are clean, you'll get perfect Sonic Booms. Perfect Sonic Booms do more damage and they're more plus. So normally, you'll do 550 damage, 600 damage. The OD Sonic Boom is insanely fast. The o you can OD your Sonic Break into an OD Sonic Boom that goes at warp, warp speed, but the cost is high. This will cost you four bars. But if you want to hit someone for the, the fastest hitting projectile in the game, there you have it. Yeah, it's literally a sonic boom. You'll also notice that it's, uh, it's blasting against the wall. It's blasting against the wall so much, which is pretty cool. Rappers are gonna cry. <laughs> uh, he's got his forward hard punch still. It still whips on crouches, but this time it moves you forward. It moves you forward and notice it's uh, plus five on hit. So you can combo after it, which is nice. I don't think it's a punish counter in this game. It stuns you for a long time though. Pretty good. His flash kicks also have a perfect version. I don't know if I'm doing it or not. Let me do it slowly. Yeah, you go somersault. But if you do the perfect version, you get flash kick. And I'm, I'm assuming it does more damage. 1,000. Yeah, 200 more damage. Five. Five. Yeah, startup's the same. Just so you guys know. OD version is insanely fast. It's a reversal. So his supers are still a charge. His Sonic Hurricane's a charge. Charge back, forward, back, forward. And he has an anti-air version. You can go low, or you can go high with it. If you combo into this in the corner with a high one, I think you can, you can uh, do a flash kick after it. Yeah. You can flash kick after it. Now, he has a command super. is level 2. Solid puncher. This is V-Trigger 1. It works the same way. You throw a Sonic Boom, you can do follow-ups after. If you press two punches at the same time, you get to throw non-charged Sonic Booms with it. It drains really fast. Unlike Jury, the timer ticks when you use your moves. But it also does a lot of damage. Very, very strong. And then his level three, you have to charge four back four kick. And it gets it's a splash kick level three. And obviously it's uh, very, very good. You can do something like... Yeah, maybe it wasn't close enough? Oh. Well, you guys get the idea. Is there any situation where you want to use a somersault version? No. The perfect song boom and the perfect flash kick, I think, are just straight up better. And it just... Since Guile's a really simple character in this game, really easy to pick up and understand, especially if you play Street Fighter V Guile, they want to just give something a little extra to distinguish Guile players, and the perfect Sonic Booms and the perfect Flash Kicks is one way to do that. But don't get me wrong, even though he's simple, he's still Guile with, you know, the dry brush system, and there's a lot you can do with him. Uh, a lot of cool mix-ups, and, and you can play him 
in different ways. But in, in particular, I should mention that his zoning is very strong. In a game with this parry, Guile can still zone you out very easily. In fact, his zoning is so good that I, I feel like he's one of the best characters in the game right now. I think Guile is very strong. Very, very strong. Okay, Kimberly. So Kimberly, she's your super fast, tricky mix-up character. Definitely wants to get in your face. Her particular normals that are good are standing medium kick. It's like Jamie where it you know blows up low normals and it's special cancelable so she can drive rush from it. Uh, it seems stubby, but it's a really good... It does enough hit stun where it, it's really good for blowing people up and with punishing. Um, her standing heavy punch is also really good. As a punish counter, uh, it stuns, it crush counters the opponent. And I think you can go two. Yeah, you can ex easily confirm uh, from it. Her crouching medium kick, you cannot cancel out of it. So it's like a poke in this game. It's plus five on hit. I think that's really good. Uh, her standing heavy kick is kind of like Young Deku, where if you get a counter hit from it, you can link after, just like Zeku. It whips on Crouchers if you hit hit it far away. But she's airborne with it, so you can use the blow people up. Uh, crouching Fierce is a good anti-air. Just for a normal anti-air. Her jumping, she has her, her, the palm drop, like the guy elbow drop. Down, medium punch in the air, you go straight down. Really good for mixing people up if you try to go for cross-ups. She has a million target combos. She can go light, medium, heavy, heavy kick. Or light, medium, down, heavy punch, down, heavy kick for the for the side switch. Uh, she can go into this knock away with it. She has the medium, heavy kick, like Young Zeku or Guy. That can go into a bunch of things. But once again, she's, she's going to be in your face, this character. Uh, her jump in particular is really good too. So let's go over her specials. Let's go over this uh, spray paint can mechanic first. So you start every round with two spray paint cans. If you press down, down, punch, you throw down this bomb shuriken. It's going to detonate over time. This gives Kimberly her mix-ups, right? Her pressure. So when you can, when you have time to set up your opponent, like you do something like this, you can throw down the spray paint can and then your opponent has to act, otherwise they're gonna be put into uh, further hit stun. And the cool part is after it detonates, you can you can combo after, so you know you can do something like she has an overhead kick, back heavy kick. I don't know the, the kill frame, so I don't know the timing, but just imagine I timed this right. And then you can, you know, grab them in the air from it. Something like this, you know? And then you can like pressure them again. Now, she only gets two stocks. Once she uses these two cans, she can throw two down at once, by the way. Like this. Or you can throw them down at the same time. But after she uses them, she has to refill them. So you do the same input, down, down, punch. And she has to restock up. But she can only stock up one at a time. She can OD the stock two. And I don't think they carry over between the rounds. So I think when you start the next round, if you don't have any cans, you have to stock them up. But someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, I honestly don't remember. Okay, let's go over her special moves. So she has her run, the guy run, core circle forward kick. If you don't press anything and you touch the opponent, you're going to jump off them. It's called arc step. When you jump off them, you can press kick for a dive kick. It's not an overhead. Or you can press punch to do a grab. This is unblockable. You cannot crouch this. So she gets a mix up from that. You can OD into this as well. And after that, you can combo after. She has stop. So of course you can do shenanigans where you, you run, stop, you know, go for a grab. Uh, you can do the OD version to make it, you know, probably more plus and faster. She has a kick follow. This will like, stop people from trying to jump over her when she runs at you. I think the OD version is plus. Could be wrong. 
plus three on block. Yeah, so she's mad plus. So she gets pressure from this. She has a slide. Slide knocks down. You can easily combo into it. Uh, her heavy kick is an overhead. So she got a lot of she has a lot of options for her run. A lot of options. And a whole you know bunch of options after she runs off of you. And like I showed you guys in the corner when I was trying to show you that mix-up. It causes a wall splat. And that allows her more juggle follow-ups, for example, that she can do after. He has the guy Tatsu. This is an anti-air. It's not like, you know, a Ryu or Ken Tatsu. This is for blowing up jumps. If you OD it, it's invincible. This is her reversal. She could do it in the air. In the air, it's used for uh, juggle combos. The OD version in particular is good because for level 2, you can do in the air. You can do this. Her level 1 is cool too. Four circle forward kicks. If you have a spray paint can, her level 1 will use a spray paint can and she throws it and tosses at the opponent. And it does extra damage. Uh, she can easily combo to her supers. She has this Hazanto move. It's this core circle forward punch. The heavy version does a canned kick follow up automatically. And from this, you can easily combo into your supers. Uh, maybe not the level 2, but the level 3 for sure. Her level 3 is really unique in this game because it gives her a buff. So she starts playing music from her cassette tape, and the music on the stage changes. What this does is it permanently gives her a buff that persists even past the rounds for the rest of the match, and it'll give her a speed and damage buff for the rest of the match. You can see now she does 111%, which is 1% higher than Jamie's level 4 drink, by the way. And she gets uh, moving speed. Throw the Easter egg. I guess I could show it real quick. It'll only take a second. So there's a fun Easter egg where uh, if you don't have to hit with her level three, as long as you use her level three, she's gonna get the buff. So you don't have to worry about landing it. If two Kimberly players do their level three, it changes the music. It adds the lyrics the music yes everyone's bumping now yeah it is awesome so she has another command room I haven't showed you guys it's her forward heavy kick <laughs> and she can hop off of you in three different directions she can hop behind you Straight up or back. And you can mix people up with this, obviously. You can cross them up. Uh, you can bait them from mashing jab and go straight up. You know, whatever you want to do. So, her course will go back punch is kind of a teleport. It's, you can go through fireballs. It goes. Uh, depending on where your opponent is. So if you're right in front of your opponent, it won't go past them. And the OD version is insane. She comes in from the from the sky and comes down. Yes, this is an overhead. And it's a fast overhead. So when you pressure somebody, you can go like this. So you can do something like... Like that. And hit him with a really quick overhead attack. Very tricky. When you remember when you when you combine all these, even though I'm not showing the mix-up, when you combine this with the shuriken stocks, right, and the overheads and the pop kick, you can really see how this character is a really tricky character. I've seen some wild stuff on, on Twitter with, with Kimberly already. Uh, she has the air grab, the Azuna drop. The OD version allows a juggle after. 
you can do some fun stuff with that. Uh, we know that she can combo into the command grab. At least the normal one. You can combo after overhead. Oh, like this? Yeah. Plus E. Yep, just like everyone's overhead. And I think that's about it. Yeah, so if you're somebody, as usual, if you're a guy fan and you're still waiting for guy, you've been waiting for him since Street Fighter V, you play Zeku, you know, you like Ibuki, those ninja kind of characters, uh, you'll feel right at home with Kimberly. She's definitely one of those characters. I think she's got a lot of potential from the mix-ups I've seen. If they're as real as they look, she definitely looks like one of the stronger characters as well. She's popular and uh, she's in a game that's so focused on neutral. Uh, Kimberly just doesn't seem to care. <laughs> so if you like to, if you like anime fighters and stuff, uh, you'll really like Kimberly. The final character. And finally, we have Ken. So Ken has gone through many changes in Street Fighter 6, just like he has in Street Fighter 5. And he's a lot different in this game, too. Plays a lot different than Ryu. So in particular, Ken is really in your face character uh where his zoning is not as strong as ryu his mid range is not as strong as ryu but his close game is strong what makes him really unique is he can go crouching light punch into his target combo so he has he doesn't need to use drive rush and he can get some serious seriously damaging combos from just a crouching light punch uh, but at mid-range, he still has some cools. He has a new kind of Lion Breaker target combo. It's medium kick, medium kick, heavy kick. And you can see how far this medium kick goes. It goes really far. He's got his heavy kick back. It's a uh, on punish counter. It works like Street Fighter V, where it knocks him up. And you can do your run kick after and combo. His heavy punch goes particularly far. It's also cancelable. So because it's cancelable, it's a really good button for him to drive rush into. Uh, and, you know, do your B&B combos. His Tatsu is a little different. Um, the OD version uh, goes up like it did in Street Fighter V. But his heavy one goes straight. So it's good corner carry again. The air OD Tatsu works like Street Fighter III. Where he just kind of goes down now. You can cross up with it, of course. When you cross up with Ken's Tatsu, the opponent lands in front of him for some reason. <laughs> like this. And you can combo after a bit. He has his uppercuts. You'll notice his uppercuts don't have fire unless you OD it. And there's another way, uh, which we'll get into the runs in a second. He has a new attack called Dragon Lash Kick. It's uppercut kick. It's supposed to be like his uh, B skill too. In particular, the heavy kick version is really strong. It leaves him at plus three up close. And on block, it's plus one. So if you catch your opponent sleeping, you know you're doing a block string, and you go into this, you can steal your turn back with this move. Uh, on hit, the Dragon Lash kick is uh, really good for combo fillers, especially after his uh, target combo. And it side switches as well. So if you do this from, you know, in the corner, you can side switch back with it, for example. It's also good because uh, you can go into your supers from it. it. Gives you a lot of time to decide what you want to do after. Good time buffer. Okay, let's talk about his Jinrai kicks. So core circle forward kick, he gets his uh, funky kicks, right? Or crazy kicks back. Core circle forward kick, uh, Depending on the strength, you can combo after, so the light version, just light kick. Or you can do heavier with heavy kick. I don't know if you can combo to the heavy kick. Yeah, crush and heavy punch. So after you do the first rep, if you press forward medium kick, or forward light kick, you go low. It combos. And it hits low. If you press forward medium kick instead, he does the overhead kick. It obviously doesn't combo, there's a gap. Or you can go into a finisher with forward heavy kick, and it's just for damage. So you can do something like damage, overhead mix up, the opponent anticipates it, you know, go for the low. The OD version gets a third follow up. So no matter what your follow up is, you get one more follow up. So now you can go low into follow up overhead 
into follow-up. Or just straight damage. Since it's an OD, he can go into his level 2 front. So you can do something crazy like... There we go. So you go into your level 2. You can get really cheeky and go into your overhead kick from it. So you can go something like this. And to the ender. And go right into your level 3. Okay, now let's talk about his run cancels. So Ken's run is back in this game. It's two kicks at the same time, and he'll run. If you press light kick, he'll cancel his run. And you have to, you have to, you can't just hold back like his V skill one in, in Street Fighter V. And you can, you know, run, cancel, throw. It allows him to be really aggressive in this game. Another cool thing about it is that if you cancel his run, Oh, sorry, he has two flops into his run. If you press medium kick, he goes into his thunder kick, his overhead kick. This is really fast. And on counter hit, you can combo after it. His step kick is really good too. This is heavy kick after the run. And since it's a normal, you can go into super after. So you can do something like this. It's really good because if you're really if you're good at whip punishing someone. Sorry, that was a level 2. It was a bad example. There we go. Which is really unique. Like, being able to whip punish like that and confirm it on that from a level 1 is really unique. If you use a special move from his run, it enhances them. So, for example, if you run and you do an uppercut, you get the flame uppercut. It does 5 hits and it does massive damage. Massive. And if you whip punish with this, uh, it's another way to get some serious damage on the opponent, too. If you're full screen, it's good, too. Like, if you throw a fireball and they jump over it, you can you can anti-air them from full screen. Like this, for example. If you run with your Dragon Lash Kick, it has uh, the unique fault that the OD does. So if you do target combo run, like this, run, into Dragon Lash Kick, you cross, you side switch just like the OD version, and you get the same kind of benefit where you can uppercut after without spending any bar, no bar at all. And you can still go into his level one, or level two, or level three. His Tatsu from the run has crazy corner carry. So what I started doing with Ken is like, when I started landing hits at the beginning of the round, I like to do the Tatsu, because I get good corner carry with it. And then from the corner, you know, I can start uh, going for damage. Now the other crazy thing about his run is that he kind of cheats the system and gets his, a drive rush from it. He can do some really unique combos where he can uh, run and cancel and, and get links that he otherwise uh, couldn't before. Especially when you combine it with the drive rush system itself, right? Uh, he can go like this. Or if they say you shimmy someone, right? You shimmy someone. Ken has some of the strongest B and Bs in this game, by far. He does massive damage. The run cancels are harder than they look because of the way the buffer window works. You're not quite pressing the buttons as fast as you can. You have to kind of time it. But you can do some really long extended loops if, when you're good with it. You, you can get an idea of it. Like this. Stuff like that. You guys get the idea. But yeah, Ken is his combo can be pretty technical. His level 3 is really cool. Because it's, uh, if you get the non-cinematic version, he can still combo after it. Oh, how do I get the non-cinematic version? You can still get a DP of it, after it, even mid-screen, which looks really sick. He can get a bunch of DPs in the corner. I think I saw one vid where... Coming at ya! <laughs> like, you know, Ken's wild, right? He's he's a, he's the flashy Shoto. So Ken, he was one of the first characters that I played, and I, I found out that 
playing him, he's unlike Ryu, Ken is not well rounded, right? In the mid range, even though he does have his mid range tools, he can't convert through him as well as other characters can. So Ken wants to be close. But once you get close and you understand Ken's trickery and optimal combos and damage, it makes up for his shortcomings in the mid range. So if you're the kind of player who likes to play aggressive, you know, with run cancels and stuff, but you still like that Shoto feel and you don't like the zone, then, you know, Ken is for you. He is the description for the character is power. And that's what he is. He's the damage Shoto power, you know? So I think Ken is really fun. Uh, I don't think he's particularly easy to play. I think he, do he does have a, kind of a, a learning gap that you have to pull through. But when you do get good with him, I, I start to see his, his potential. Yeah, big deeps is definitely his, his thing. And I think that's it. I think that's every character. We went through all eight, guys. How long did that take, man? I felt like I was sitting here forever. Oh my god. Can you imagine if I started showing some like B and B combos? Oh my god, that was exhausting, guys. I I never want to do that again. <laughs> Guys, doing those videos offline is way better. I never want to do this live again. That was a horrible experience. I was forgetting what I was going to say and I was getting nervous. I'm like, oh my God, everyone's watching me do this breakdown. I don't know what I'm talking about. You guys were making me nervous, man. I'll never want to do that again.